All right, people, so let's carry on here. In the next example, they ask us to just do a little bit more of the same, although it's a little bit less abstract this time. So they give us log base six of three plus log base six of two. Notice that I don't really know what to do with either one of these individual logarithms. But with this sum here, I can turn it into log base six of the product, which is log base six of six. And I know log base six of six, that is one, since six to the one is six, right? Very nice. In the next example, they give us log base five of 375 minus log base five of three. And again, I don't really know what to do with either one of these individual logarithms, but with this difference here, I can turn them into just a single logarithm, log base five of 375 divided by three, which is log base five of 125. And this one equals to three since five cubed equals to 125. <clears throat> Very nice. This next example is a really fun one. They give us some things that uh, are just, I guess, known to be true to the sort of mystery author of this problem. And we can use the facts that we're given to sort of deduce some new things. So they tell us here that log base B of two equals to 0.6 and log base b of 7 equals to 1.3. Now, we don't know what b is, so we don't know much about log base b of some other stuff. However, anything that we can get by combining uh, 0.6 and 1 point, or sorry, anything that we can get by combining 2 and 7 in some uh, way of either taking their product or maybe their, um, their quotient or maybe um, the product or quotient of any exponent, any power of two or seven, we can then know log base B of by the formulas five, six, and seven. So let's see, let's watch it go. So they ask us to find log base B of 14. Well, 14 is two times seven. So we can write that this is log base B of two times seven, but by property five, that becomes log base B of two plus log base B of seven. And we know that log base b of two we were handed is 0.6 and log base b of seven is 1.3. So adding them together gives us 1.9. All right, in part b, they give us log base b of 3.5. Well, 3.5 is seven divided by two. So we can take the difference of the two logarithms, log base b of seven minus log base b of two. That gives us 1.3 minus 0.6, which is 0.7. Okay, in part C of this example, they give us log base B of 56. Well, 56 is what? 7 times 8? And 8 is 2 cubed. So really, we can write 56 is 7 times 2 cubed. Ah, so then we can turn this log base B of 7 times 2 cubed into the sum of log base B of 7 plus log base B of 2 cubed. Ah, but then... 2 cubed, that logarithm can become 3 times log base b of 2. So we'll have log base b of 7 plus 3 times log base b of 2. And again, I know each one of these individual quantities, so we have 1.3 plus 3 times 1.6. This is 1.3 plus 1.8, which is 3.1. Okay, and in part D here, they give us log base b of 49 divided by 16. Ah! But 49 is 7 squared, and 16 is 2 to the 4th. So I can write this as log base b of 7 squared over 2 to the 4th. But then rule 6 kicks in and tells us that this is the difference of the logarithms, log base b of 7 squared minus log base b of 2 to the 4th. And then rule 7 kicks in to tell us this is 2 times log base b of 7 minus 4 times log base b of 2. And now I know these two individual quantities again. So this becomes 2 times 1.3 minus 4 times 0.6, which is 2.6 minus 2.4, which is 0.2. Very nice. OK, and now the last short topic here in this section is about the base changing formula. So they give us that log base b of x equals to log base c of x divided by log base c of b. This is where here b and c have to both be sort of valid bases. They have to both be bigger than zero and not equal to one. 
but you can always change between any two by this formula. So typically here, the C that we like to go about is having C equals 10 or C equals E. So then we could write this formula here as either log base B of X equals log of X over log of B if our base was 10, or log base B of X equals natural log of X over natural log of B, which would happen if our base, was, if our base C was the uh, natural base E. So then this formula was like really a hit before the uh, Texas Instrument incorporated the feature that allowed you to take log base anything of anything. Um, so they used to just have, I think, log base 10 and log base E. And so this formula was a lot more relevant back then. Um, it's still kind of cool now, and I'll make it relevant at the end of this talk by sort of proving to you why that it's true. But for now, let's just try to use it. So log base 7 of 4 is given by natural log of 4 divided by natural log of 7. And so if you take to your Texas instrument, you can divide these two and get that this is 0 0.712, roughly. Okay, and so before we head out today, let's see why this base changing formula is true, because it seems to me like it came out of nowhere. Um, I will say so did formulas uh, or properties five, six, and seven of logarithms, but we can talk about a little bit more about motivating why those are true when we meet in class on Zoom. So, um, so for now, let's just end with the proof of the base changing formula. So let's let y equal log base b of x. That's this thing on the left that we want to know about. And so what does this mean? Well, by definition, this means that b to the y equals to x, okay? And so now let's take this equation that we have b to the y equals to x, and let's take log base c of both sides, where c is our other mystery base, normally either 10 or e. So we take log base C of both sides of this equation and we get log base C of B to the Y equals to log base C of X. But then rule number seven of the, or property number seven of the exponents at the beginning of this talk is makes this guy on the right or on the left equal to Y times log base C of B. So we'll have Y times log base C of B equals log base C of X. So now we can divide both sides by log base C of B. That should just be some number. Um, so we now have that, and since B is not supposed to be one, this number is not going to be zero in particular. So we can divide both sides of this equation by it. And so we're left with Y equals to log base C of X divided by log base C of B. But Y was log base B of X to begin with. So we can conclude that log base b of x equals to log base c of x divided by log base c of b. Excellent. Okay, so um, stick around for the next talk. We'll really get to use logarithms in a powerful way by solving equations.